In parts 1 and 2, we investigated the RLC circuit and we constructed the theory of complex impedance. In this part 3, I want to look at an actual example with some proper numbers for the values of the resistance, the inductance and the capacitance, and for the voltage source and the frequency. You can see all those numbers that I've put in here. 3 ohms for the resistance, 0.02 henrys for the inductance, 100 microfarads for the capacitance, an alternating voltage source with maximum voltage 200 volts, and a frequency of 50 hertz. Just in case you've forgotten, microfarad means 10 to the minus 6 farads. So 100 times 10 to the minus 6 is the same as 10 to the minus 4. In what follows, we will first of all calculate the complex impedance. To begin with, in its Cartesian form, then we will convert it to polar form. Once we've got the polar form, we'll be able to identify the overall magnitude of the current and also the phase difference between the current and voltage, and that will allow us to write down actual expressions for the current and the voltage at a general time t. Let's start with the complex impedance. Remember it's called Z, and the expression we found for it was R plus J omega L minus 1 over omega C. We have R is 3 ohms, L, the inductance, is 0 0.02 henrys, and the capacitance C was 10 to the minus 4 in farads. The thing we don't have yet is omega. However, we do have the frequency. F is 50 hertz. And remember that omega is 2 pi times F. So that's 2 pi times 50 which is 100 pi. We'll leave it like that for the moment and evaluate it when we have to. So now, in fact, it's just a matter of putting all these quantities into the Z. Z equals R, that was 3, plus J, omega was 100 pi, times 0.02, minus 1 over 100 pi times 10 to the negative 4. We'll eventually have to put that into a calculator, but let's simplify it a little bit more first. That's 3 plus j, and 0 0.02 times 100 is 2, so that's just actually 2 pi. And on the bottom here we have 100 times 10 to the minus 4 is 10 to the minus 2, but 10 to the minus 2 underneath is 10 squared on top, and 10 squared is 100. OK, now if we want some, some approximate values, we need to resort to a calculator. Well, here's the answer. It's 3 minus 25.5478. J. That's our complex impedance. I now want to proceed to write this in polar form. First of all, the modulus of Z is the square root of 3 squared plus 25.5478 squared, which comes to 4. Then we need the argument of Z. That's the inverse tan of minus 25.5478 over 3. And when we work that out, it comes to negative 1.4539. And remember that that must be in radians. If we wanted, we could convert that to degrees, and it turns out to be 
negative 83.3 degrees approximately. So that enables us to write down Z. Z is, I'll make it approximate and I'll cut off to the second place of decimal. So we have 25.73 cis of minus 1.45. There is our complex impedance in polar form. So now we have to remind ourselves how the complex impedance appeared in the relationship between complex voltage and complex current. It basically looks like a kind of complex Ohm's law and the impedance Z is effectively the resistance in the circuit. Now let's take the magnitude of this equation, the absolute value, that is to say the, uh, the modulus, the complex modulus. So we have mod V is mod Z i hat and when you take the modulus of a product you can take the moduli separately and multiply them and mod Z we know that's 25.73 and the modulus of i hat of course is just i zero now what about the modulus of v hat we haven't actually addressed that very carefully yet but it all comes back to this 200 this 200 is the modulus of V hat. Some people call it V0. So that's 200. So what we have here is V0 equals 25.73 I0 and therefore 200 is 25.73 I0 and that gives us the amplitude of the current by division. I0 is 200 over 25.73. I'll work that out in a moment, but just in general let's remark that we have I0 is V0 over mod Z of course. Okay, so what is that number? Well, put it into a calculator and you get the amplitude I0 is 7.77. That'll be measured in amps of course. So we're now in a position to write down the full expression for the current. Recall that omega was 100 pi in this example. So our current is I0 sine omega t. So that's approximately 7.77 sine 100 pi t. Now for the voltage we have V hat is Z I hat with the result that the arguments of the complex numbers Z and I hat add up. So remember the arg of I hat is just the omega T and the arg of Z in radians remember was around about minus 1.45 and so the argument of V hat must be omega t minus 1.45 and so we can now construct V hat as remember the modulus of V was V0 that was 200 e to the j omega t minus 1.45 and in particular taking the imaginary part v the imaginary part of v hat must be 200 sine of omega t minus 1.45 so here we can see that the voltage lags behind the current behind because this is a negative angle. That angle remember sometimes is called phi, it's the phase difference. So it lags behind by 1.45 radians and we've looked that up somewhere, we had that in degrees and we? there we are 83.3 degrees.
So that sums up just about everything we need to know about this circuit.